These kids are hurting. They're not being educated. They're not being nurtured. The, the mothers and fathers that go through this trauma that we go through, it's everlasting. We can't do anything about it. We have to step out of the box. See, a lot of us, we want to do something, but we are afraid of the struggle. You can't be afraid of the struggle. If you're afraid of the struggle, then you lost from the beginning. It would be wonderful if people reach out to not just the mothers out of town, and I love you, yeah. but what about the mothers in Cleveland? See, because there's plenty of stories that have not hit the media. Nine years ago, my, we, we didn't have um, cameras, you know, social media. The only thing we had was my space. And you heard the 911 tape of my son pleading for his life. Like we're used to it, like back in the days when Master used to whoop us or, or something like that. And we better be quiet because Master come in the room. We got to change up the game. That's, we're not the 1900 niggas no more. We're not the 1900 niggas no more. Okay? So, but well, let, me just, let, me just, let me just say this is that the Constitution. It needs to be thrown away. Mm -hmm. um, I believe also, this is just me, okay? This is me. I believe the Republican Party and the Democratic Party is not serving us right now. It needs to be thrown away along with the Bill of Rights, okay? If they want to do a new constitution, they need to do a new one that fits the 21st century American people. And I'm going to change and turn my morning into the evening. Because I'm sorry I'm going to And my pain now has become a powerful person. So now I'm out here, I have to walk around and do whatever I have to for all the young men and women that are out here. Last year they made seven million dollars in the prison system uh, where they lock up our children and our black men. And those jobs that the prisoners are doing were taken out of the city. It's a lot of false representation out there. You know, I, I get tired of being misled by the community, the clergy members or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? We need to come together as one and stop being sellouts and thinking that the white people won't take the white supremacy is not gonna take care of you at the end of the day. They're yeah, not. Yeah. They're not gonna do it. And what I have experienced, because I was wondering why I was not, not much of an uprising in Ohio for my son, 12 years old, playing with a BB gun in the park. Okay, we all seen it. Why did it have to take for people outside of the state to come in? I didn't understand that. So, I need for Cleveland, Ohio, let's, if we got to just come together and go to the governor's office and do what they doing, we need to do it. Because I'm about making them uncomfortable. There's a lot of people that won't work with me because they think that, they, they, they think I may be mean or nasty. No, I'm the truth. That's what I am. And I'm not, I don't have to sugarcoat nothing for nobody. I want y'all to go back and share this with all y'all peoples or whatever. I'm not gonna sugarcoat nothing. I'm not no sellout. I'm not selling my soul to nothing. Um, and I'm here to make a uh, We have 55% of the population of African American in Milwaukee, and we only have a few that are unpleased with the services of the Milwaukee Health This year already, we have had a hundred, over a hundred thousand young men stop and harass. For nothing, absolutely nothing. You definitely can't be black and have your license to carry a gun. But the white people do it all the time. In our community, they're living in the suburbs and bring their guns in our community. Crazy stuff, leave them in our alley for our babies to do. So, I was angry because I didn't understand that I lived to be 50 years old and I, I have done nothing to stop the behavior of what we as black people had to endure. 
I worked for the state of Wisconsin. And it was nothing I could do to keep my child from going to that park that day. Like he rightfully had the opportunity, he rightfully was a citizen to sit in a public park for an hour and a half, not bothering nobody. I've had white people walk up to me and say, he was so polite. This lady said she stumbled uh, stepping off the car and he caught her and asked her if she was okay and stood there with her until she got her balance. She walked away and he told the man to have a good day and smiled at her. That probably was the last human being that my child had conversation with. But at, this, at the end of the day, you all have plenty of mothers in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. No one reaches out. You know, I make my voice be heard because I go out there. I keep my son name alive. You know, my son, car was shot up eight times by a police officer, John Lundy. And everybody praised John Lundy for the simple fact that he's a football coach. Mm. But at the end of the day, the streets talk. That football coach were on, was on drugs. They never drug tested. They need to drug test the police officers. He didn't call for backup. He entered the park. My child, my son was still sitting there. He snuck up behind him. He said in his statement, he said he held his keys so he wouldn't hear his keys. But once he walked up to Dontre and Dontre looked up at him, said that Dontre looked at like a monster. Uh, he felt threatened. So he took him out of a non-threatening position, laying down, stood him up, and resumed to do a cherry pat down. And when he started patting my son around his waist down by the travel car, my son put his arms down. And Christopher Manning, struck him eight times in his head, shoulder, his chest, and the back of his head. And Don Trey took the baton. He said, you effing want to play, took 10 steps back, and he took 14 bullets. And this happened in less than a minute and 32 seconds. Christopher Manning was fired six months later uh, for doing an illegal pat down and for breaking policy. Uh, a year later, they gave him $70,000 a year for disability. Because his chief, 48 hours before he fired him, he had to tell him he was fired so he could go to police and apply for disability. They gave him a whole year of back pay. I got no indictment on local, state, or federal. Uh, Hillary Clinton actually went to Loretta and asked her because I waited 10 months after I waited 10 months for the DA to not invite. Found out two days before Christmas. Then I waited 10 more months. Hillary called her after I went to one of her rallies and shut it down. And I finally got a phone call that she was sending somebody to meet with my family. And they told me they could not prosecute him because they couldn't prove that he killed that trace with Midas, Malice. I'm like, are you serious? He put 14, 14 bullets, his gun locked up. He was actually trying to reload. No bruises. Then they say, well, he feared for his life. What was your fear? You know, he was like, Dr. Trey was 190 pounds. Dr. Trey was 160 pounds.
So if they can articulate, or if they can just say, under the statutes of excessive force, that in their mind, you're a threat, you're dead. Sheriff Clark, y'all seen him at the Republican Party? He turned the water off on a prisoner that was in isolation and suicide. The man did. Six days, they didn't feed him, no water, no nothing. But that ain't murder. But if I had somebody at my house, and I don't feed them or give them water for six days and they die, I'm in jail the rest of my life, or possibly death penalty. Flat out. And that's just, that's just where I'm at at the end of the day. I strongly am against uh, police brutality. I do fight against the government. I don't care nothing about them. And I think it, needs, it should be an open dialogue in America about racism, police brutality, and gun violence. Period. Yeah. We, we lose it, just like she said, period. On all ends of the fence. These white supremacists is not going to take care of us at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. They not. So pass the pass it along. Tell the people if you want to tell them something to get involved with an organization that's doing the work and not just taking the money and living off of it. It's people out here like these mothers and myself that we have to live through this every day. Every day. And it's very hard. I'm, I, that's why I really haven't been in Ohio that much. I've been traveling, but I'm also still raising three other children. So, but you will start seeing me popping up at these meetings, these, these secretly meetings. They need to see my face because they haven't seen it. And I'm still waiting on a cur uh, current, um, uh, I'm, I have a current uh, investigation with the Department of Justice. They haven't said anything. It's going on two years. You haven't said nothing? So, need to make it uncomfortable. There's nothing to forbid me from two minutes from now. Not wanting to be here no more. We can't make this up. And if we don't get people to vote, the way they're, they're spending money trying to divide us, putting guns in our, guns and drugs in our neighborhood, killing our babies, incarcerating them for their business, we're in trouble. So I say, we have to go, we got to hit them where it hurts. We put the politicians into office and we can take them out. But a lot of people, they wait for the big election, which is very, very important. But every year there's an election. We have to pick our legislators. We, and we gotta see, a lot of people don't know who the legislators are. They don't know who the community members are. They don't know anything. And I'm guilty of the I didn't either. I mean, I always voted, but I didn't know who was who. But I bet you what, I know now. <laughs> and every time that I have a problem, me and our mothers here, or the New York, we have a group of mothers in New York, we have no problem going up to Governor Cuomo's office and knocking on his door. We go down to the floor. We go down to the assembly where they, they are voting on the laws. We go sit in there. Sometimes they don't want you in there. We go, we know people up there now. We get a seat and we watch them. So this is what you have to do. A lot of times we go up to Albany. We don't know what's going to happen. We get up early in the morning, rent a van. All of us get together. Five o'clock in the morning, we are on our way up to Auburn. But this is what you got to do. You don't know what's going to happen, but you know what? If you don't do it, there's nothing going to happen. Mm -hmm. So when we did, we got Governor Cuomo to sign an executive order for a special prosecutor because we brought makeshift coffins. We knocked on his doors. We had press conference. We did everything that a lot of things we did. We didn't know whether he was going to get arrested for it or not. But you know what? We didn't care. 
we knew our voices was going to be heard. So this is what I say we have to do now. First of all is to vote. There is power in your vote. Yes. If there wasn't, there wouldn't be many of people spending millions to try to restrict our vote. That's right. There wouldn't be people trying to manipulate your vote. So if they're doing all this, we have to take a step back and say, well, why are they doing this? Why do, do they not want us to vote? There must be power in the pen. Okay? So we have to do that. And just there has never in the history of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, been a police officer to go to jail for shooting or murdering anybody. The question that is, how do you train somebody that has that in their heart? You can't, ain't no training for that. That's right. Uh, it's, you that's know, so true. they need to be evaluated. And if they're sick, take their guns, take their badges, and get and keep them out of our neighborhood. That's right. That's an ill. And if you look at statistics about how they when they shoot our when they shoot our black men and women, they shoot them multiple times, 40 times, 50 times. You cannot find that statistic on a white person nowhere. They try to protect them more than try to kill them. Even when the, in Charleston, when they, that boy killed all nine of those innocent people in the church, what they do, they put him on a bulletproof vest and went, took him to Burger King and fed him. Those police officers should have been fired. I, I, I mean, we should have been outraged about that. Yeah. We really should have took a, a stand on that because I was really outraged at the way they treated him after killing nine of our people in a church. Those innocent people was there serving God and he went in there and he shot them up and they treated him like he was some kind of a hero. We can rally, we can march, we can protest, but if we don't put our dollars, they don't do that to the Jews because the Jews are united. They don't do that to the Irish because the Irish are united. And as you said, sister, it is going to take our unity to do that. And we're going to have to put aside all of our whatever differences we have. There's going to come a point in time, brothers and sisters, where we're going to have to realize that we're going to have to put our boots on the ground, face our people where they are, and we're working with the youth. You know, they settle with me. You know, but they're settling with a lot of families. But it's still important that the community, you know, let's let's reach out to all the parents. You know, it'll make a big difference because you have parents that are afraid to come out. Because, you know, some parents feel like it's something they done. No, it's nothing you done. It's what the police done. And I just wanted to say, you know, let's let's reach out to all mothers. Because it could be it, it could be a beautiful impact in Cleveland, Ohio. We have a lot of mothers that their kids was killed by police. And you know the majority of them. You know, that's why it's important. You know, it makes us mothers in Cleveland, Ohio, feel some kind of way. You know, Angelo Miller was killed in Lexington Village. You know, and, and when he died, I got a little media coverage. But at the end of the day, the most important thing was that 911. And we have to make sure that our kids are not forgotten, you know, because if we take a big stand in Cleveland, we can shake things up too. Over the department where the two police officers got killed, he actually had recruits in Milwaukee getting police officers to take them to Dallas because the chief finally resigned. And why the chief finally resigned is because he didn't want to go for that it was a black man in that garage, and they knew it wasn't, that killed them two police officers. It was a sniper, and he wasn't black. That's right. And he had a problem with it, so he's no longer the chief. But they're getting ready to get 400 uh, police officers from Milwaukee as we speak to take back to Dallas.